legislation was uh, passed for the betterment of the people not for one political party but as a as, as pakistan people's party we are the founders of this constitution so you you can't just uh, expect us to do anything wrong against the spirit of 1973 constitution hey, let us not forget that the parliament is not supreme the people of pakistan are supreme and the preamble to the constitution of pakistan also says that it is the people who have come together to enact a constitution there were a lot of serious concerns about the fact that parliamentarians were being abducted and they were there was a coercion and there was duress and we have statements on the record by uh, you know akhtar mengal who was saying that his senators were being forced to vote in a particular way In today's case in point we're going to talk about the 26th amendment to the constitution the 26th amendment has been passed by the national assembly it's been passed by the senate and it has also received the president's assent in particular we'll be talking about the judicial reforms that have been brought by the 26th amendment it has changed quite significantly our entire judicial structure the process of appointment of the chief justice has changed the chief justice is now to be appointed from a panel of the three most senior judges by a parliamentary committee in which the government commands the majority the composition of the commission that appoints high court and supreme court judges has also been altered constitutional benches have been created at the high court and the supreme court level the judges that are to sit on this constitutional benches the government has been given a say on which judges will sit on these benches and an evaluation of high court judges and their performance has also been included in the 26th amendment so the 26th amendment to the constitution has increased the role of the government in the judiciary to talk about these amendments we have with us mustafa baloch who is a representative and member of the pakistan people's party and we also have moiz beg who is a lawyer based in karachi moiz also writes for dawn and thank you both so much for joining us today and for taking out the time mustafa i'm going to start with you there for there two critical aspects of the 26th amendment in my view firstly the procedural validity and secondly the substantive uh, substantive validity as far as the procedure is concerned there has been a lot of criticism by lawyers and by civil society on the manner in which the 26th amendment has been passed there was little to no debate in parliament and it the national assembly session went on you know past midnight and there's been a lot of criticism about the environment in which it has been passed so how would you respond to the criticism regarding the process of passing the 26th amendment see actually uh, the process of uh, passing this amendment was uh, i think was was made critical because a particular party was not in favor of that and we have seen that uh, the 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 government was initiating the uh, draft and uh, discussing with all the political parties and all the opposition parties initially and uh, somehow uh, things were not uh, you know getting on the same page but later on what we saw that blawal bhutto worked effortlessly and he he he, he was uh, you know uh, trying to convince uh, jui molana saab and uh, all the other stakeholders because this thing was very important for us as a political party and for for the parliamentarians as well because what we have seen since 2007 that there was constant hindrance by the judiciary in the parliamentary affairs and uh, time and again uh, you know the, there there was a substantial move by, for clipping the wings of parliament and as as we all know that parliament is supreme it's the mother of all institutions so i think uh, this was also a very important thing and other than that what we have seen that uh, the lack of justice uh, and people were seeing ju- seeking justice since decades you know people have sold their properties sold their assets just to you know get justice for past 20 30 years and uh, the more than 50000 cases are still pending in supreme court and uh, the focus was only political cases so it it's a good move and i think uh, 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 just because of the timing just because of some political you know uh, players try to sabotage the process we we should not look at that uh, in that point of view we should look at the positive thing of this uh, amendment and uh, it's a very it's a very great move and it's a landmark and i think uh, with, with due time uh, uh, the people of pakistan will get the benefit of this
Uh, Mois, I'm going to ask you the same question to start off with. That can you please tell us what your thoughts are on the manner in which the 26th Amendment has been passed? Because there is a strong voice by both lawyers and by civil society that this is not how constitutions are amended. You don't do it in the middle of the night. You don't do it uh, without making the official draft public until the very day that it is to be tabled. And so, what do you think, and what are your thoughts on the manner in which this entire process has taken place? Well, Rida, thank you for having me on the show, firstly. But yes, I completely agree with you that there are two aspects of this amendment. There is a procedural aspect, and then there is a substantive aspect. Now, even though there are a number of issues in the substance of the agreement uh, of the amendment, but even before we delve into the substance of the agreement, there are a number of procedural irregularities in the amendment. Now, as you had also alluded to. There was an undue haste in bringing the amendment. We saw that last time when the People's Party-led government introduced the 18th constitutional amendment, there were debates and deliberations for more than nine months. Nonetheless, this amendment, notwithstanding the fact that it fundamentally alters the manner in which judges are appointed, the manner in which judges hear constitutional cases, nonetheless, this amendment was passed on the same day that it was tabled in the assembly. The other issue, I think, let us not forget that the parliament is not supreme. The people of Pakistan are supreme, and the preamble to the Constitution of Pakistan also says that it is the people who have come together to enact a constitution. And we have seen that throughout our jurisprudential history, there are certain judges who have also highlighted that the preamble to the Constitution forms a grood norm, and. As such, there are certain principles, including the independence of the judiciary, which cannot be tinkered with by the parliament as well. Nonetheless, we see that the people of Pakistan have been completely excluded from the process. No drafts were shared with the people of Pakistan. We had certain drafts which were surreptitiously leaked into the public, but there was no official draft shared until yesterday, the very same day in which this amendment was passed. So, if this amendment was being passed to ameliorate the sufferings of the people, then perhaps the people should have also been given the opportunity to share their views about what the amendment does and if this amendment serves their interest. The other issue is that let us not forget that serious concerns have also been raised with respect to the credibility of the February elections. So, when the credibility of the parliament or when the credibility of those who have been elected in the February elections is suspect. any amendment which is passed by those people will also be suspect and the credibility of that amendment will al always be questionable the third issue with respect to procedural irregularities is that there were serious concerns about certain parliamentarians going missing only to be found in the parliament at the time of the amendment's passage so you cannot ignore all these issues when discussing the substance of the agreement of the amendment and the last issue which i think it also Uh, bears mention is that when the government tried to bring this amendment earlier, a few weeks earlier, the government could not muster the required majority or the required support. And then we saw that the Supreme Court came to the mm -hmm. government's aid, and the Supreme Court invalidated its earlier decision in the Supreme Court Bar Association case and allowed the government to solicit the votes of people who were not a part of the Treasury bench list. Now, while I personally also have a number of disagreements and reservations with respect to the Supreme Court's earlier decision in the Supreme Court Bar Association case, but nonetheless, the manner in which the Supreme Court took up the review, the manner in which the Supreme Court excluded Justice Muni Bakhtar from that bench, and the manner in which the government uh, surreptitiously promulgated an ordinance to allow the Chief Justice to bypass the Practice and Procedure Act. all of these issues cannot be ignored before we delve into the substance of the amendment because the constitution is but a political document and we cannot ignore the political aspect from the legal and constitutional aspect of this amendment now delving into the substance of the amendment we see we that so oh, just before you uh, delve into the substance of the amendments because you brought it up i want to give mustafa also a chance to say something about this is that moise has brought up that there were a lot of serious concerns about the fact that parliamentarians were being abducted and they were there was a coercion and there was duress and we have statements on the record by uh, you know akhtar mengal who was saying that his senators were being forced to vote in a particular way so what is the position of the pakistan people's party about these criticisms about about the fact that votes have been improperly procured in order to pass this constitutional amendment 
See, Pakistan People's Party never agrees with such things. And uh, as far as uh, uh, you know, uh, there are there were news about Zain Qureshi, uh, son of Shah Mahmud Qureshi, that he was also supposedly abducted, but he turned out to be uh, you know sitting somewhere in Islamabad, and he uh, you know. Uh, gave a statement that he was not abducted and he he couldn't uh, you know attend the session and I don't know uh, there was some other issue with him so you know there are a lot of things going on in social media and we, we should not you know take them seriously but as far as uh, you know the fellow uh, um, uh, panelist uh, Muiz Beg said that Parliament is not supreme let me correct you that Parliament is from the people by the people so the the people of Pakistan vote and they they select the members and their members represent them in parliament and if you question the credibility of elections then you have to go back to the history in 2018 also there were a lot of questions on the credibility of elections when pti swept uh, almost uh, more than 100 seats but uh, we what we saw that they were uh, you know given free hand uh, the uh, imran khan was uh, you know uh, above all he was above the constitution he was above the parliament and uh, you know things were fine then but when things are against PTI I, I believe then the, the, there's a question on the credibility of the elections I think this is not the topic of concern the topic of concern should be the content of the amendment the amendment gives relief to the people of Pakistan because there was a lot of burden on the Supreme Court now the federal constitutional bench will give us so, sort of relief a fresh air to the in the Supreme Court and the and the judges will you know they, they won't be focused on uh, one thing because what we have seen that uh, on personal likeness and dislikeness decisions were made and if you don't like someone's face just remove him you know if someone is not writing a letter to Swiss court just give him a sentence of five minutes and then just remove the prime minister so things were things were happening like this since if Tikar Chaudhary, uh, you know, uh, took over the Supreme Court and swore water was used like you know just like, like like a joke. So I think things had to be changed and the reforms are good for the country. And uh, unfortunately, maybe we haven't seen Parliament uh, functioning uh, like this before. So it's maybe it's a uh, you know a strange thing for people. But I think what happened yesterday. Uh, it was very, uh, you know, uh, legislation was uh, passed for the, uh, you know, for, for, for the betterment of the people, not for one political party, but as, a, as, as Pakistan People's Party, we are the founders of this constitution. So you, you can't just uh, expect us to do anything wrong against the spirit of 1973 constitution. So Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was the one who uh, brought consensus with, within all the political parties at that time. And uh, up till now, uh, what we have seen that 18th Amendment also, the President Zardari was the, uh, you know, architect of that. And now Blawal Bhutto, he, he, he was the one who was trying to build consensus with all the political parties, even with PTI as well. But unfortunately, what we have seen that PTI has, uh, you know, they, they, they just want something to happen 24-7. They just want some, some sort of chaos, some sort of, you know, anarchy, and they don't want anything substantial to happen in the parliament. So I think Parliament is meant to bring reforms for the for the for the people, for the country, for the Parliament. Um, okay, so Moise, I'm going to just take that now to you because Mustafa has brought up the substance of the amendments, and it is he's saying that the judiciary was very political and the judiciary made mistakes in the past, and therefore this amendment was something that was required. Now, you were going to talk about the substance of the amendments. And if you could talk also a little bit in particular about the appointment of the Chief Justice and how this envisages that. Because is the fact that the judiciary was political in the past a justification now to include the government in the process of appointing the Chief Justice? And could you just uh, explain the process and what you think uh, your thoughts are on that? Well, with the first of all, I think there can be no doubt about the judiciary's performance not being up to the mark. There can be no difference that reasonable people can have disagreements with the Supreme Court's jurisprudence in the last 15, 20 years. And we've seen that ever since the 1950s, the Supreme Court has validated dictatorial regimes as well. So there is no doubt about that. But the current political parties who have passed this amendment, their justification of passing this amendment is akin to military dictators who take over and usurp power under the pretext that because democratic governments do not deliver. As such, we have the right to usurp democracy and we have the right to topple elected governments. So this justification that just because the judiciary was not delivering, we could have uh, tinkered with the independence of the judiciary is akin to the arguments that military dictators have used in the past. 
Now, delving into the substance of the amendment, we, under the unamended Article 175A of the Constitution, there was a Judicial Commission of Pakistan which nominated individuals to against vacancies in the superior judiciary. Now, this Judicial Commission has now been reconstituted with the members nominated by the government having a majority in this Judicial Commission. And while the Judicial Commission in the past also nominated people to the superior judiciary, this time the Judicial Commission has also been given the power to periodically review the performance of High Court judges. Now, in practice, perhaps this may be a good idea to uh, periodically review the performance of High Court judges. Nonetheless, we have seen in the past in the Munir Hussain Bhatti's decision, the Supreme Court has clearly highlighted that while judges, while parliamentarians may be well placed to speak about the antecedents of judges, they may not be the best judges of a judge's competence and his skill set. So while judicial members of the Judicial Bay Commission may be in a better position to judge whether or not a judge of the High Court is performing well, perhaps giving that role to parliamentarians raises a number of concerns because a number of constitutional issues that come to these high courts concern the government of the day. And given that a major, and given that the government would have a majority in the Judicial Commission of Pakistan, this raises serious concerns about the independence of the judiciary. Because not only will the members of the government be selecting judges, but members of the government will now be periodically reviewing the performance of these high court judges. Now, as far as the special parliamentary committee is concerned, we know that since the 1990s, since the since 1996 and 1997, when the Supreme Court rendered its decisions in the Malik Asad Ali and Al Jihad trust cases, the senior most judge of the Supreme Court has been appointed as the Chief Justice of Pakistan. And the 18th Amendment, which our fellow panelists' party advocated, the 18th Amendment entrenches this principle. The 18th Amendment, for the very first time, held that the senior most judge of the Supreme Court will become the Chief Justice of Pakistan. Nonetheless, the 26th Amendment now changes this position. And the Special Parliamentary Committee, which while has representation from both the government and the opposition, it also has a majority of the government's representatives. And the Special Parliamentary Committee will now select a Chief Justice from a panel of three senior most judges. Now, what this essentially does is that it encourages judges of the Supreme Court to ingratiate themselves to the government of the day, to not pass any decisions that may be controversial, to not entangle themselves in any decision that would perhaps uh, that would perhaps be unpalatable to the political party which is in power at that point in time and we have seen i think uh, i would like to defer with our fellow panelists over here that the procedural irregularities cannot be divorced from the sub from the substance because why was there a need to bring this amendment before 25th october so when you look at the manner in which the Chief Justice will now be appointed, and when you look at the fact that the current incumbent Chief Justice will be retiring on October 25th, you can see it betrays the government's malice and it betrays a desire to preclude Justice Mansoor Ali Shah from taking over as the Chief Justice of Pakistan. So I believe that there are, as I said, the substance of the amendment also raises serious concerns about the independence of the judiciary because judges who are appointed to the, to the High Court will know that they have been appointed by a judicial commission which comprises of the government's members. They know that if they will be confirmed, they have to be confirmed by that same judicial commission. And even once they are confirmed, their performance will be periodically reviewed by a judicial commission comprising of the government's members. And as far as Supreme Court judges are concerned, they know that if they are ever to become the Chief Justice of Pakistan, they will have to ingratiate themselves to the government of the day. Mustafa, so I'm going to now let you respond to the concerns that Moise has raised about judicial independence with regards to the substance of these amendments. And, you know, he's in particular highlighted that a special parliamentary committee in which the government commands the majority will appoint the chief justice and government members will be given the right to evaluate the performance of sitting judges. So how is this consistent with judicial independence when the government will eventually be a party before the courts and judges may be hesitant then to give decisions against the government if the government is playing such a significant role. So how do you respond to these concerns which have been raised about judicial independence? See, Rita, obviously this amendment is fresh and there will be concerns. And But I think the, 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 uh, 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 an aspect of check and balance on the judges and uh, uh, you know evaluation of their performance is nothing wrong. And I think that sh it, sh it should, have, should have happened way, way back. 
and uh, if 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 a judge is not performing if a judge is not giving uh, uh, his you know 100% then obviously the, the, there should be a question on the, his performance so i think th there's nothing wrong in it and uh, so far uh, or the, the the major clauses of this amendment are uh, accepted by the entire parliament and uh, and not just with the parliament the uh, the, the the legal fraternity and the the, the journalist uh, section of the uh, society the civil society palawal uh, bhutto has uh, you know discussed with everyone so in, it it was not just like uh, one fine day he thought that you know there is a need of this amendment so this thing was working uh, on uh, the party was working on it and uh, uh, since 2006 uh, you know that it, so it was something an incomplete agenda of uh, charter of democracy so uh, i think uh, yes there are concerns there can be concerns and which will which will be addressed with the span of time so uh, but questioning the integrity of uh, you know those who brought this amendment and uh, uh, you know doubting on their uh, intentions i think this is wrong Moith I'm just going to ask you one last question which is that we've seen in the past that our courts have held that they have the right to strike down a constitutional amendment in certain situations where it violates the independence of the judiciary or other salient features of the constitution now i know it's very difficult to predict anything in our country but if you could tell us what do you think are the chances of a this being challenged in the court and b if it is challenged do you think that there is a chance that the court strikes down this constitutional amendment rather before i answer your question may i just say one thing which i had missed earlier that one of the reasons or justification which is being peddled to enact this amendment is that there are a number of pending cases in the supreme court and as such this amendment would miracul miraculously address uh, all those pendencies and will unchoke the choked pipelines of justice now the interesting aspect of this particular amendment is that judges who are currently appointed to the supreme court those same judges will be a part of this constitutional bench so i fail to understand how this amendment would alleviate or address issues with respect to pendencies and you may remember that in august last year the arbitration law review committee of the law and justice commission headed by justice mansoor ali shah comprising individuals like justice jawad hasan had proposed and had transmitted a model arbitration law to the government that law spoke about arbitration and mediation and would perhaps have addressed uh, the issue of pendency the government however is yet to enact that law so perhaps given that the government has done nothing else uh, a number of issues that come in our courts are because of inconsistent land revenue records because of issues in prosecution issues in investigation but given that the government had addressed none of those issues and has directly enacted this amendment which does not do anything to address pendencies instead and all it does is that it affects the manner in which judges are appointed so perhaps the government's bona fides as far as pendencies are concerned are also in question now coming back to your question as you had highlighted that he has the supreme court had in the district bar raval pendi case held that it has the power to strike down an amendment on the touchstone of the basic structure or salient features but this amendment raises an extremely interesting question because yes i think uh, both of us expect this amendment to be challenged soon but who hears a challenge to this amendment would such a challenge go to the constitutional bench of the supreme court and would judges who are a part of this constitutional bench be competent to address the constitutionality of an amendment amendment which gives them the power to hear that very amendment so i think that is the first and foremost question and unless we know which bench of the supreme court will be hearing this case whether this will be heard by a full court or whether this will be heard by a constitutional bench at the supreme court it may be extremely difficult to predict the outcome of such a challenge nonetheless if our precedents are to go by i believe that this amendment certain aspects of this amendment do violate the preamble of the constitution and the salient features of the constitution and perhaps to that extent warrant being struck down Mustafa the last thing i want to ask you is that you said that your party has been fighting for this since the charter of democracy in 2006 and this is something that you achieved after a long struggle of trying to fight for these reforms and to fight for these judicial reforms now that it's been passed by both houses of parliament and also received the president's assent what do you hope will be the consequences what do you hope that this will achieve moise highlighted that pendency was one of the things that your party was saying that will be addressed because of these constitutional amendments but where do you see this going from here 
I think this will bring a very uh, uh, constructive change in, in the in the overall uh, politics of Pakistan and you know overall democratic process of Pakistan. And uh, I think the 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 the, the constant hindrance of uh, uh, judiciary or parliamentary affairs and the government, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the things that were going on since past decades we have seen. So I think uh, those things will be, uh, you know, uh, we, we won't see those things happening uh, more often. And uh, they will be more focused on the, the judiciary, uh, will be more focused on their own work. And uh, I, I, I would also want to make, uh, uh, you know, one, one, one thing correction, you know, that uh, if you if you think that the uh, the federal constitutional uh, bench is uh, the same bench, the, the the judges would be the same judges who would be a, a part of the Supreme Court. So it won't make any difference. So, so what's the problem then? If 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 this amendment is bringing uh, a sort of bifurcation, what we see as you know, it's it's bringing bringing a sort of uh, division in the Supreme Court that you know certain judges would be looking for like uh, public related cases criminal cases civil cases and there will be a section of judges looking for uh, the constitutional uh, you know matters so if if you just find this thing uh, as as the same it was before so what's what's the un crime of so i think it's it's just a uh, you know just uh, for the for the for the heck of it people are criticizing this amendment but overall the 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 amendment was in the favor of public not in the favor of any politic, particular political political party and one more thing justice dorap patel who, who was a senior judge of supreme court he who refused to take oath under pco he was also the one who uh, advised for a federal constitutional court so it, it isn't it, it's not a, uh, the uh, the the cons uh, you know the concern of any political party or uh, uh, maybe uh, you know the the political party leaders it was also a concern for the judges because they have seen that uh, what, when 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 uh, there there was a dictatorship the, these judges they were like you know surrendered themselves so we need these kind of things the reforms happen in the country so that you know in future these things uh, you know help the democracy Thank you both so much for joining us and for giving us such different perspectives. We had Moise Beg who highlighted concerns about judicial independence and procedural invalidity of the constitutional amendments. And we've had Mustafa Baloch who has said that this is a step in the right direction and that these reforms were much needed and that in fact they've come too late. So thank you both so much for joining us and for giving us the time.